Hello everyone, welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. Today we're going to have a quick look at Addictive Drums 2 and how we set it up for multi-channel outputs. And out of all the plugins I've tried for virtual drums, this one works pretty much right out of the box. So right click, insert virtual instrument on new track, select the VST I version of Addictive Drums 2. And you can see here it's an 18 channel out plugin. This window will pop up, build routing confirmation. Do you want to add the following tracks for this effect? If not, only the stereo one and two output will be audible without further routing. And you want to choose yes. Many plugins, you don't want to do this. You want to set it up custom. I found that with Addictive Drums 2, it works perfectly the first try. The only other thing I would do is to put it into a folder. So we'll just call this drums. And I'm going to put this at the top and make that a folder. And all the other tracks below it are now routing through that folder track. And make this track the last in the folder. So then when we make a new track, it's not going to go into the folder. Or if we have other instruments in the project, it's not also going to be going through the drum bus or drum group, drum folder, whatever you want to call it. Uh, now, anything that comes out of these tracks are going through the drums folder track. Addictive drums must be in this folder or outside of the folder, but it cannot be the folder itself. It just won't work. And that's where a lot of people get stuck uh, doing this. They try to make the addictive drums instrument the folder. The addictive drums two track is only going to send audio out to these other tracks, tracks three through 16. We're going to put our MIDI files onto this track. So technically these tracks can be hidden from the arrange view and we only need them in the mixer. But for now, we'll just leave them the way they are. So let's go to the effects page on Addictive Drums 2. Really the only thing we need to do here is to assign these to the outputs. If you look at the bottom of the mixer, each track has a down arrow button. And this is where you assign this track within Addictive Drums to where it's going to go. So click this and you have this option as the master where it's currently going uh, separate out pre-fader, separate out pre-fader plus master, separate out post-fader or separate out post-fader plus master. With the options of uh, pre-fader plus master or post-fader plus master, uh, it will send out to this track within Addictive Drums 2, which that track will also go out to here, plus the kick will go to its own track. Does that make sense? I hope so. What we're going to choose, and what I would suggest you choose, is the separate out pre-fader option. And you can just uh, mouse wheel over this and choose that. And if you just Go down one click, it should set that out to separate out pre-fader. So the actual effects are still going through the master track. So it is still important to have the uh, master if you're going to use the delay and reverb built in, but everything else is going to go through its own track and its own track only. Let's just play a beat here. Soul of the kick drum. Soul of the hi-hat. Solo the drum rim. And let's listen to what's on the master track. Just the reverb and delay. Other than it being a little bit loud, you don't really need to set up anything else. Uh, this will still work with all of the presets, uh, but you won't get any sort of special processing that's on the master track. Like you won't have the compression, EQ, and things like that uh, being applied to the sound of these. You'd probably want to use the post fader plus master just so you have the same mix as the preset. It's just kind of a, a matter of personal preference. Technically, you'd be hearing everything doubled. Everything would be going through the master track plus its own individual track might not want that, unless you're doing some pretty extreme uh, processing on the master track 
and blending that in kind of in parallel. So if we look at the routing for this, the Addictive Drums track is not going out to the folder. Its parent send is turned off, which means that output one and two of, of Addictive Drums is not using this main output uh, like it would be if you just put in the plugin without doing any special routing. It has its own send going out to the master track. So output one and two goes to input one and two of the track called master. These are all pre-fader post effects sends. Then the other outputs are like the kick, the snare, the hi-hat, those are all mono sends. And then the overhead and the room tracks are all stereo. If I had to set this up manually, this would be exactly the same way I would set it up. So it's really cool that this is all set up with all the mono sends uh, set up, already named, all that kind of stuff, all automatically. So unlike a lot of other drum programs, this pretty much works exactly how you would want it uh, right from the start. And as long as you don't make this track, the track with the plugin, a folder track, your routing's going to work great for you. And that's it for this tutorial. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon. And visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.